Welcome back from the ad break and let's continue with our lesson. So we are going to be moving on to the next concept in our concept map and that is the gradient. So the gradient is an inclination, slant or the slope of a line. Now the gradient is the vertical change divided by the horizontal change. Now this is a ratio which is a vertical change is to the horizontal change. Let's see what we are talking about when we are talking about the gradient. So if we have a linear line, so we have a linear graph there, what would we be talking about when we say the vertical change? Now, this would be the change from this point to this point there. And for us to calculate that vertical change, it would have to now be that value there and that value down there. So that would be the vertical change from the first value to the second value over there. What about, so that, sorry, is the vertical change. What about the horizontal change? So keeping in mind the same two points again, but now we are looking at the horizontal change, meaning the values that are on the horizontal line. And those are the X values. So we are looking at that value over there and that value over there. So the horizontal change would be now the difference in these two values there. And that is how a gradient would be calculated. So now let's look at a graph where we have the gradient of, yes, if you are thinking of one, you are correct. Now you must always keep in mind the standard form, which is mx plus c. And our focus now is on the gradient. So the gradient here is a one. And as a reminder, of course, we see that that gradient would be the change in y um, divided by the change in x. So that gives us an answer of one. The gradient there is one. What about this uh, linear graph over here? Here we know that the gradient is a two. So now that the first gradient is smaller than the second gradient, what do you think happens to the line? Look at how the linear graph has changed. Remember, gradient is the slant of a line or how steep or the incline of a line. So as we can see, this second line over here is more steep than the first line. And that is clearly seen in the change in Y over the change in X. We can see that it, the, 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 the Y values, there's much of a more difference, meaning it is higher than the, y val the X values there. So that means that it becomes more steep. So a gradient of one and a gradient of two that means that the line with the gradient of two would be more steep than the line of the gradient of one. Let's look at more um, comparisons. We have there y is equals to x. And what is the gradient here? We know that the gradient is a one because the coefficient of that x is a one. What about this one here? The gradient is a five. Now we are going to compare gradient of one with a gradient of five. Now we can clearly see that it is more steep than the one with the gradient of a, uh, of a one. So the one that has a gradient of five is more steep than the one that has a gradient of one. Again, we have a gradient here of one. And now we have a gradient of one third. Now, which one is smaller between one and one third? We know that one third is the smaller one and it is evident in the line as well because as we can see, the line where the gradient is one third is more gentle than the line where the gradient is a one. And it is evidently shown in the graph itself as well as the um, gradients. And then we have a gradient of five. And as we can see, because five is a high number, that means that the line is also 
very steep. And when we are comparing it to the one that had one third as the gradient, we can see that that one is very gentle, is less steep, and the difference is quite clear. Let's look at when we have a line that is y is equals to three. Now this line y is equals to three, what is the gradient here? So remember, the formula is mx plus c. So which one would be the gradient here? The gradient, as we've seen, is the coefficient of the x. But as we can see there, there is no x value. So what does it mean we have? It means we only have the y-intercept there, which would explain why our line is a horizontal line that has no gradient, meaning it has no steep. So the gradient here is a zero, no steep at all, or no incline at all. And it is only passing on the y-axis, which is why we have the y-intercept only. And then when we compare that with a gradient of one third, of course, even though that is a very small gradient, but it is a gradient, meaning it will have a small steep or it will be a little bit gentle. It is more of a steep than the one that has no gradient at all. Let's move on to the last concept of our concept map, and that is y-intercept. But we have been talking about y-intercepts throughout the other concepts as well, because remember, the y-intercept is that c that is found in the standard form. So all we are going to be doing now is identifying that y-intercept. And if we remember the definition of a y-intercept, it is where our graph intersects with the y-axis. So let's look at this graph here and what is the y-intercept from what we can see. As we can see, this line is passing the y-axis at zero. So that means that our y-intercept there is zero. What about this next one here? We look at our graph and we look at where it is passing our y-axis and that is at a positive one which is also shown in the formula because remember mx plus c, that c is the y-intercept, so that means that c is a positive one. We look again, we know that the y-intercept there is zero, and when we compare it with another linear graph, now as we can see, this y-intercept is a bit lower. The one that we looked at previously was at a positive one to show that our graph has moved up. But now our graph has moved down and we can see that the y-intercept is at a negative two. And we can also see from our uh, formula that our y-intercept is at a negative two. So from this y is equals to x, our graph has gone down by two, which is shown there in the minus two. Then we have a graph where the gradient is a two, meaning it is more steep than the last graph that we were looking at. But look at where the x, the y-intercept is. Now the y-intercept is supposed to be at a positive two. So we look down on our graph and there it is, our y-intercept is a positive two. Sorry, at a positive two. So that means that c is two. And when we are comparing it with another graph that has the same gradient, so them having the same gradient would mean that the steep is exactly the same and as we can see there. But now what is different with these two formulas? It is our y-intercept. Our y-intercept there is at a negative three. So it's the same steep, but this graph has gone down. And we can see that because our value for c is a negative three. Now, looking at the same graph again with the gradient of 2 and the y-intercept at a positive 2 as we can see there, let's compare it with another graph that has now a negative gradient. And how can we see that it has a negative gradient? We can also see that it is a decreasing graph. Remember graphs, we look at them moving from the left to the right. And when we move from the left to the right, we can see our y values are going down. So this is a 
decreasing linear graph. Now, what do we notice about these two graphs? They have exactly the same y-intercept, but what makes them different are those gradients. We have a positive gradient here, meaning it's an increasing graph, and then we have a negative gradient here, meaning it's a decreasing graph, as we can see. Let's look at this last graph to end off our lesson. We have there the graph y is equals to 3x plus 4. Now, as we can see there, let's look at the questions that are given. Firstly, is this graph increasing or decreasing? Now, if we look at the um, y values moving from left to right, so as I'm moving from the left to the right, I can see that my y values are going up, which means that they are increasing. So the answer for there would be that it is an increasing graph. Then what is the y-intercept? We can find this on the formula or we can simply go to our graph and identify it but the answer will be the same. That y-intercept is at y is equals to 4. And lastly is the gradient steep or gentle? Now, when we're looking at the gradient value, which is a three, and three is a high number, which would show, and as we can see there on our graph, that it is actually a steep line. We can see that from the gradient value and also from our actual graph. Thank you for joining today's lesson. We really enjoyed and we learned a lot today. We hope to see you next time. Goodbye.